Hello and welcome to the lecture series of coordinate geometry. We're going to talk about all the postulates of coordinate geometry and we're going to start with distance formula. and slope of line then we are going to talk about section formula and some spatial concepts involved over there further we are going to talk about the equation of line And then we are going to talk about the perpendicular lines and parallel lines. But before we start with all these concepts, I hope you know the basics of coordinate geometry. If not, let's have a look at the basics of coordinate geometry before we move ahead. So basically, we have a coordinate plane. So this is given so that we can describe each and every point with a unique identity. So these are the two axes which divides my plane into four quadrants. This is termed as first quadrant, this is termed as second quadrant, this is termed as third quadrant and this is termed as fourth quadrant. So basically we have two axes, the primary axis or coordinate axis. This is given by positive x and this is given by negative x. This is given by positive y and this is given by negative y. So they meet at origin. Now. Right hand side means positive coordinates like 1, 2, 3 and so on. Left hand side means negative coordinates, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Above the x-axis you have positive coordinates for the y-axis, plus 1, plus 2 and so on. And below you have minus 1, minus 2 and so on. If you know these basics, you can skip the intro and directly come to distance form. But if you don't, continue over here. Now, we can, now, every point over here has a unique identity. For example, if I give you this point, then this coordinate will be termed as sum x comma y, where the first coordinate is given by the x coordinate of this point. And how to get this x coordinate? Just drop a line perpendicular from this point to the x-axis. Let us say it meets the x-axis at 3. So this x becomes 3. And similarly do for the y-axis and you get the y-coordinate. Let us say this intersects this also as 3. So this becomes 3, 3. So these are the coordinates of this point. Remember the first coordinate is the x-coordinate and the second coordinate is the y-coordinate. x-coordinate is also called as abscissa and the y-coordinate is called as ordinate. And together they are called as coordinates and hence they mark the beginning of coordinate geometry. Now just a point to notice first quadrant we have x also positive and y also positive. So here you have the coordinates like this positive and positive. Similarly you can identify second coordinate when you draw a perpendicular from a point on second quadrant you will meet the x axis at a negative. Point. So this will become negative and of course here it becomes positive. Third quadrant negative comma negative. Both are negative. Fourth quadrant if you have a point drop the perpendicular positive and second one negative. So the idea is just that the first coordinate is the x coordinate and the second one is the y coordinate. Just remember that and then you are done. Let us see that how GMAT make beautiful questions out of just this information. So you just should know four quadrants, right? The first coordinate is the x coordinate, the second one is the y coordinate. x is called as abscissa, y is called as ordinate. Positive positive, negative positive, negative negative, and positive negative. So let's have a basic question on the quadrant system which we have studied right now. Just few questions, and if you're fine. We'll go ahead to a GMAT like question. So, just the question says, you need to tell where these points lie, in which quadrant. So, I have minus 3, 4, 4, 6, 0, 8, 0, 0, and minus 2, minus 3. 
If you know all these answers, you can directly go to the GMAT like question. If not, just answer these. So minus 3 and 4. So if I just draw a rough sketch, minus 3. That means on x axis they are going to negative side. And positive on the y axis. So somewhere over here. So it's second quadrant. First, second, third, fourth. I think it's so quite simple. If you're looking for 4 comma 6, positive here and positive then above. So positive, positive, you're going to the first quadrant. 0, 8. Now, you're not moving on right hand side or left hand side because it is 0. 0, 8 lies somewhere over here, only on the y axis. So, this answer is y axis. Now, remember, for y axis, x coordinate is equal to 0. Very important point. Similarly, if the point lies on x axis, then the y coordinate is equal to 0. This will give us a missing information sometime. So guys remember y axis of course x coordinate is 0 and x axis y coordinate is 0. Point 0, 0, 0. Neither you are moving right left nor you are moving up down. So you are sitting over here only and there is nothing but origin. Minus 2, minus 3. So left hand side minus 2 and bottom of the y axis sorry bottom of the x axis minus 3. So this goes to third quadrant. I hope this is clear. If it is fine, perfect. We can go ahead and attempt a GMAT like question over this Cartesian or coordinate system. Alright, so our question says Does x, y lies in second quadrant? First statement says x plus y is less than 0, and second says magnitude of x is greater than magnitude of y, or mod x is greater than mod y. Now, this looks like a challenging problem. Let's see how to approach this. So first statement says x plus y is less than 0. Therefore, we have multiple options. First is both x and y are negative. Because a negative plus negative will result in a negative quantity only. Further, it could have been that x is positive and y is negative. Something like x is 2 and y is minus 5. And similarly, we can have x negative and y positive, where x can be something like minus 2 and y can be something like plus 1. Any of them can be dominated. So by just this information, I cannot tell in which quadrant you lie. Because if you are both negative, then it is about third quadrant. Here it is about positive and negative, that means fourth quadrant. Here you have negative and positive, that means second quadrant. Now you say mod x is greater than mod y. That means x coordinate is more dominating than y coordinate. That means whatever it is, the magnitude of x is greater than magnitude of y. That means if you remove the sign, whatever they had plus or minus, then the value of x is greater than value of y. So the case is like these are not possible. That means y cannot be dominating over x. Then you can have a scenario like this. x is dominating but you are lying in second quadrant. Further, they both can also become negative. Like x and y are both negative. Minus 3 and minus 1. So you cannot be still sure whether you are in second quadrant or third quadrant. So again, the answer becomes E. So let us see the variation to the same question and see how it becomes a little bit more difficult. If I add over here that xy is less than 0. Now let us see what happens. First statement again, as it was same, x plus y is less than 0. And second statement, mod x is greater than mod y. Now, what change this statement bring? Let's go ahead and check it out. So, x comma y less than 0 tells me that x and y have opposite signs. Now, this is a very beautiful statement and very beautiful manipulation which we see and we might use it very, very often. Now, x can be negative, y positive, and if x is positive, y is negative. So we have just two scenarios. That means 
first and third quadrant are already out, we are left with second quadrant or fourth quadrant negative positive or positive negative. Now x plus y less than 0 also tells us that one of them has to be less than 0 or both of them have to be less than 0. Both of them can of course not be positive and first was already out but this could have been achieved by the values like minus 2 comma 1 or minus 3 comma minus 5 third quadrant or when you have y negative but x positive something like 4 comma minus 6. Now what this statement has done is cancel out these kind of points as well. That means third quadrant is also out. We are left with second and fourth after combining these two. Now still not sufficient second or fourth no clue yet. Going to the second one mod x is greater than mod y. Again it tells us that x is more dominating than y. That means if you remove their signs minus or plus then x will have higher value than y. Therefore the values like these are gone 4 comma minus 6 when you club them up because x plus y is negative and x is more dominating clearly tells me that x is negative. And when x is negative, they have opposite signs, therefore y is positive. So x negative, y positive, the quadrant becomes second, so the answer becomes C. So be careful that you don't miss these kind of statements given the question itself. Not the statements, but the question. Remember x y less than 0, x and y are of opposite signs. x y greater than 0, x y are of same signs. So this left us in second and fourth. This also left us in 2nd, 3rd and 4th, but 3rd out because of this, so 2nd and 4th, this tells x is more dominating than y, and x plus y is less than 0. Therefore, x has to be the negative one to make this x plus y less than 0, and x dominating than y, and x y less than 0. I hope this is clear, if yes, do not forget to subscribe us, more such videos are coming very soon. Hope you are enjoying the series and continue with us for all these concepts as well. Thank you and have a nice day.